This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and together we are your KTAR car guys. Heard every Saturday from 11 to noon at Bumper to Bumper Radio and Bumper to Bumper Radio.com. We are helping the motoring public have a better overall car experience. So I imagine you have some car questions, or at least we're hoping you do. You can get a hold of us at 602 277 5827. 602 277 KTAR. You can also text your questions to 411 923. And today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, we'll be taking an email of the week. Of course, open phones and text. You can text us at 411-923. And uh, Matt, it's 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 we're getting winding down on the summer, but we still got you know <laughs> August, September, a little bit of October, still a little warm. And uh, is your air condition in your car going to make it through the summer, or are you already noticing it's kind of petering out? Or did you already have it serviced at the beginning of the summer, and now Peter is petering out? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you could have that, and it's not that the guys that did the service did a bad job. It's just symptomatic. It's just kind of how how the AC repair part of the car goes. It can go a lot of different ways. Yeah, you know, you know and it's so many components in an air conditioning system to make you actually feel cold. You know, in April, it's you know even a wimpy system feels pretty good in April because it's just not that hot yet. And then May rolls around. We actually had a hot May this year. That's when the phone starts ringing. People come in for a service of their air condition. So they go in to get the service of their air condition. And, uh, you know, Matt, you said it's a two-step process to get your air condition service. What the heck do you mean by that? Well, sometimes it's two steps. Right? And sometimes you can have multiple. You have one symptom. Oftentimes the symptom is my car is just not blowing cool air. But that could be caused by one or two different parts of that system so the way i see it and is is there's many components you have to have a pump or a compressor that has the ability to make cold air so you have to have a sealed system that can hold a charge level of whatever pounds or ounces of freon or r12 or refrigerant whatever you want to call it we'll just call it freon for the sake of uh simplicity simplicity it's like coke it's a coke whatever it's a cola so you have to have a proper charge of Freon in the system, and then that system has to turn on. And when you turn on the AC button, that does a couple things. It's going to turn on. It's going to send power down to the electromagnetic clutch to engage the compressor. And it's also going to say, hey, turn car, computer, whatever, relay, turn the fan on. Hmm. So we have to make cold air, and then we have to blow the cold air, Right. So those those are you know basically the way the system works. Now you can dig in a little deeper. Is now there's the vent system. Now we have to tell this cold air where to go. Does it go out the floor? Does it go out the vent and blow on you where it feels good? Does it go out the dash? Or maybe you don't really like the car super super cold. And that's so a little too chilly. We got to warm it up a little bit, but we know, still want it to be cool. I put mine down to set. I put mine as cold as it goes all the time. You know, but I know a lot of people. One of my friends listening right now, probably Jim, who's one of the AC gurus. He's always got his at seventy two. Yeah, it drives me nuts. I want to turn that sucker down. <laughs> but if you wanted at seventy two, your AC, the the compressor or the functioning part of the of the AC system, that makes. 45 degree air all the time. The only way you get to 72 is by adding a little bit of hot air to it. And that's how you have your blend doors or your vents underneath the dash. So to me, those are the three systems. The, the, the charge system, the ability to blow the air or move the air to you, and then the vents to blend. And then, of course, you have some cooling fans and, and some things underneath. So there's, there's multiple components or multiple sets to this system where you can have failures. The most common to me, Dave and I, were, we, we, of course, were arguing this a little bit before the show. Cause I was right. Well, you thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> we're both right because there's multiple parts to it. 
you know, I always start with me, and it depends on the year of the car. I mean, if you've got a three-year-old car and, it, and you just complain it doesn't feel so good or maybe you have a bad odor, mm. where are you going, Dave? Cabin filter. Yeah. So you're going to check for the the airflow um, and the cabin airflow because if you had, don't have good airflow, you know, it doesn't feel good. It's like going home and standing under a ceiling fan. You don't change the room temperature. You stand under the ceiling fan. You're just moving air. You're, you're just, just creating turbulence. And you feel better. So it's colder. So a cabin air filter many times can cure the problem, so to speak. That car may not have been low on charge at all. A two, three-year-old car, you know, probably no leaks. System's probably pretty full. Maybe down a little bit. Just, you know, yeah. hard, hardly mentionable. But I wouldn't look, I wouldn't be looking at that three years. But now you come in a car that's five years old. So to me, I think the most common complaint People say, oh, my car doesn't blow cold. So then we have to start interrogating. To some, we, have, we ask a lot of questions. When you say cool, cold, it doesn't blow cold. Does that mean it's cool? Like it, cool my basic thing, is it nice and cold at night but not so much after work? Yeah, 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 big time. That's usually a charge level. Mm. Um, or it doesn't blow cold air or it doesn't blow. It just blows hot air. Okay, well, that's different. Is it blowing heated air? If it but, feels like your blow dryer, then we're looking at that mixing function that you were talking about. Right. Uh, it shouldn't it's, feel like a blow dryer. We're just pumping. Because the other thing, your car is making that uh, evaporative coil cool. It's also got a heater. Uh, it's also the heater's always really running, whether you know it or not. It's got it's got hot water running through it. Yeah, there's a gallon of 200 degree water sitting in your dash all day long, every day, depending on your system. You know, some cars have a heater control valve that cut off the flow, and some don't. So there's multiple ways this can go. So when you come in for an air conditioning service or the complaint that your air conditioning is not good, we're going to ask you a lot of questions. Cool but not cold. Does it do it? Is it better in the morning than it is in the evening? When was it last blowing cold? These are all, did it just was it ice cold one day and then boom. If it was hot or no cold air, that's a different set of symptoms. That might be a catastrophic loss of a of a hose or something, and you're going to find that pretty easy. That could also be an electronic problem because, remember, we've got computers and body control modules mm-hmm. monitoring all this stuff and telling it when to work, much like a transmission, Dave. You can have a transmission problem or you have a transmission control problem. You can have an air conditioner problem, that box, just like the transmission, but that box, like the transmission, has to be told what to do and where to blow. Pressure switches, temperature sensors, there's, uh, you know, there's a brain that makes it happen. Sometimes the brains go bad, sometimes the sensors go bad. You know, all kinds of things can happen. Hey, I had one this week, you know, and, and the customer was a little bit upset, but he did. I think, honestly, they just didn't quite understand. The complaint was, and this is how you get into multiple functions, and like we said, sometimes it's a two-stop visit, or it's a it's a series of visits for, to complete the repair. The most common one is it's low on charge. Let's just assume the cabin air filter was good and we didn't have any airflow restrictions, and maybe the system holds 20 ounces, you're low four ounces. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. If my math is right, it's about 20%. Six, you know, something like <laughs> like that. Uh, so it's a you know twenty percent loss of charge. Now that's nice and cool. But in a perfect world, eighteen point three. Oh, okay, you did, you did that. <laughs> I just okay. made it up. Sounded okay, right. Okay, Raymond. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but but the um, see, you made me just total brain. Yeah. Fart. So you but, know, twenty ounce system, sixteen ounces. But we don't know if you lost that five ounces over five years or over five weeks. So it depends on how big that leak is. So we're going to charge you up today. We're going to leave you leave today with ice cold air. But what we've done is we've put a shot of ultraviolet dye into that system because we can't always find the leak. We got sniffers. We go around the specialized mm-hmm. deals that can smell the freon and, and whiff it out because it doesn't have an odor uh, that we can pick up on. And, and and you might have to come back in two weeks. You might come back in two months, or you may not come back till next summer with the same thing going, hey, guys, mm. it's kind of like it was. So that's when we pull out the ultraviolet dye light, the black light, and we look, and, ah, oh, there's the leak, and then we can fix it up. So but that service of... that service you got in May can be peter, petering out here in August. Yeah, so the service is not necessarily a repair. No. We didn't fix your air conditioner. We just service it to bring it up to where we can test it, make sure it's full of charge. And make sure you know there, there's no leaks, or and you always can't find the leak right away. In this case with this BMW, his complaint was, you know, sometimes it's just not cold at all, but when it is cold, 
it's not great. And then other days, it's just I can't even get I can't even get the not so great air. So that system was low, like twenty ounces of a thirty ounce system. It was it was basically empty. So now we have the thing blowing ice cold. So now we're making cold air, and this is where we get into the beginning of the show talking about multiple systems. We're on a test drive, ice cold air suddenly boom, then blow. No, it's just not blowing warm. It's just blowing warm air, outside temperature. That was one of his original symptoms. That had been happening a long time ago. So there's there's multiple components. So we fixed the charge level, but now for whatever reason, the compressor's not turning on and the condenser fan isn't turning on. That's another subset of that system. So now we've got to go, we fixed the charge level. Now we've got to go figure out why is this compressor not being told to turn on or the other way, why is it being told to turn off? Mm. <laughs> so, well, if you live in this town and you drive a car, I'm pretty sure at some point you're going to be dealing with air condition, and maybe you're scratching your head, go, yeah, it is kind of wimpy. And it, you know, I don't care if your car is sitting in the sun and it's 115 degrees out and it's not under covered parking. We don't have covered parking in my shop. <laughs> By the end of the day, you know, even though my air conditioning is working great, man, it, it's at least 10 minutes before I start to get a little cool air. I think because that dash is just so heated. It's super heated, and we'll talk about the best way when we come back from the break as to how to get the car cooled down the fastest. For sure. Well, we got Jay, we've got Rich, and we've got Andrew. We got a couple open lines at 602-277. 5827-602-277-KTR. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. (laughs) It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family-owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long-lasting relationships. And oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet, and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise, and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby, and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do, and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. trust here in the valley to repair your ride this is bumper to bumper radio ktar news on 92.3 fm you know dave one thing i miss about not having carrie in the studio with us today and, and many of you out there don't know who carrie is we mentioned his name once in a while he's our producer if you will dave and i come up with all the content but he helps keep us going yeah keep us keep in line fun. And I miss his music today. We haven't heard this one in a while. I like the I like the music switch up that Carrie does. Yeah, so that's true. I don't think Carrie's listening now, but Carrie, we miss you, and uh, we're looking forward to some some new music again <laughs> next week. But you're back on Bumper to Bumper Radio, as always, every Saturday at eleven. I'm Matt Allen. This other guy is Dave Riccio, and we together are your KTAR car guys. We're talking about your car's air conditioning today. I know you guys all driving around there listening. That sucker's turned on. It is working overtime. Full blast. Full blast. But we can talk about anything you want. It doesn't have to be air conditioning. Whatever your question is, we've got the answer for you, or we'll find you one, or we will refer you to someone that will get it for you. And I think we've touched a nerve, Dave, because a lot of people have called 602-277-277. 5827. That's how you get a hold of the show and ask us your questions. 602-277-5827. And you can text us at 411-923. We'll talk a little bit later later about how to get the car cool the fastest, but should we grab a phone, Dave? Let's go with Jay in Chandler. He's got a 2004 Acura TL. How can we help you, Jay? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. I just want to let you know. To keep a car cool, you also have to get it tinted correctly. Because if you don't tint it, I drive a black vehicle, my car cools down in 15 to 20 minutes. That's a major issue with a lot of people's cars. Uh, My question was about the 
Uh, my gas. My car takes uh, premium gas. Do I always have to put premium gas in there? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that may not be what you wanted to hear, but, yes, if your car, we'll, we'll touch on gas a little bit. And, and you know, Jay, that was going to be one of our topics, but we decided to go with air conditioning. Fuel prices are on the rise. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've, I've written an article on KTAR.com a, f- a couple years ago. You can probably find it about picking the right fuel for your car. If your car requires high-octane fuel, use it. If it doesn't, don't because you're wasting your money. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, if I don't use the high octane fuel, my car pings. Well, that's because there's a problem that you need to fix. Your car was designed to run on the 89. It should run on the 89 and actually can be less efficient. But back to the air conditioning point that he made, window tinting helps, putting those sun visors in, right. know, the, the sun shield. I think, you know, remember the company Dash Mat? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they made Dash Mats. Well, nobody really uses them anymore. They make really cool. I think oh, it's them custom size. I just bought one for my yeah, wife's car. I bought one for my car. That's where I learned you it. You just from. give them the year, make, and model, and it's a nice thick. You know, it's got the bu- it's got the bubbles in the middle of it, and it fits perfect. Yeah, you know? because I, I have the Costco one, and I like it because it's like the wire, and you can to kind of do the figure eight and fold up and slide it in the seat, and it doesn't take up any room. But those ones oh, that uh, they're bitching. The other one they got, <laughs> the other one it's called that, right? it's called Dash Mats of Arizona is, is who supplies that stuff, and they got the deal where they got the shade on the right uh, A pillar and the left A pillar, uh, and then you pull them together in the middle. That's too Sun City. Uh, <laughs> No way, my I don't that. know. But well, but the other thing is, think about which direction you're parking your car. Mm. You know, I come to work in the morning, and I'm 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 you know usually I I leave at some point. I've always got to run an errand. I park with the back of my truck facing east, not to my windshield. Mm. In the afternoon, my truck normally would be pointed west. Well, I back into the spot then because my windshield, and we're even changing the way we park customers' cars. We usually park them so that they can just pull out and leave. Well, what we've discovered, sometimes we go and pull the car up for them. Good Lord, that car is hot because that windshield is just sucking in the sun all afternoon. So well, the other thing, too, it's, it's a little bit of a deal. You, you look for a tree, you know, for shade, but the other thing is you get bird crap on your car. So it's like, oh, what do I do? Do I want to go to the tree? So anyway, yeah. we got to get back to the phones. Let's go with Rich in Queen Creek. He's got a 2003 Cadillac DeVille. How can we help you, Rich? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yes, well, I've had this thing uh, forever, and uh, I baby it. It's only got 50,000 miles on it, and the service engine soon light has came on. So I go down to my friendly dealer, and he tells me that the code is something about an internal transmission leak, and it does not affect the driving of the car whatsoever. But I understand that with that service engine soon light on the dash, I can't even buy license plates. Is it. that correct? And uh, what else can I do? Absolutely true. Uh, number one, there is no code that says internal transmission leak. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've seen that one. I've been working on transmissions a long time. Uh, but there is something going on with the transmission. Uh, to turn the check engine light on, Cadillac, right there in that era, man, they sure had a lot of... Uh, they had a lot of issues with torque converters. Mm-hmm. So there is a couple of uh, seals uh, in, inside the transmission that go bad and cause a little bit of slip in that torque converter clutch. That's probably what's turning your check engine light on. Very common. I mean, that's a pretty educated guess at this point. I'm not driving the car. Well, and I want, I want to clarify something that you said, Dave. And, and you said, I've never heard, you know, there is no code that says you've got an internal, internal failure. And that's not because Dave doesn't know the codes of the transmission is because, in fact, there is no code that tells you that. Like, a lot of people will come in and say, I went to my local auto parts store, and I have a code for a bad oxygen sensor. No, you don't. There's no code that tells you you have a bad oxygen sensor. So I think what you got was the service advisor's interpretation of of what the of what the of what the code means is that here's what we usually find is an internal problem. So I just kind of wanted to clarify, right? You know, clarify that. It's probably the codes of 740 or 741 as related to the torque converter, Uh, and then inside the transmission, we know that that's a result of some seals that go bad that affect the torque converter. So that's kind of that's kind of how we got to that point. Right. Exactly. And then the other thing, you're right. The reason the check engine light comes on is because it, it it typically has something to do with the drivability or mainly the effect of the emissions control. So believe it or not, if your transmission is not working right, 
it can affect the emissions. And so that's why the check engine light is on, because it's not necessarily the engine, but it's it can affect what's coming out the tailpipe. And and if you're doing that and you're polluting, you can't get your license plate. You will not pass an emissions test with the check engine light on. Yeah, and what it, what it is, the engine is putting in 100 turns, just to use numbers, and it's only getting, through the transmission, is only getting 90 turns out. So our grams per mile is going up because we're not getting everything we're, you know, putting out. Yeah. Basically is what that comes down to. Where and it's, it's it? a bugger because you got a car that drives great and you're not feeling anything other than that little yellow light that's coming on. You that, know, uh, and Rich, the other thing, you're in Queen Creek. You're not that far from Tri-City Transmission, which is our bumper-to-bumper radio transmission shop. And Dave, would you guess, you go to a lot of places, you can end up with an overhaul, but that can be fixed without, you know, you don't need a new transmission. Am no, I, am I, no, correct. I mean, that, is a, correct. that is a repairable problem, and, and that's not one of the ones where you go to the transmission shop and they say, oh, well, Rich, we're, you know, we're going to have to pull this thing out and take it apart. It's going to be a few hundred bucks, and then we'll call you and let you know what's wrong. That guy's never fixed their car before, or that's just part of his scheme. Mm-hmm. <laughs> am I right? Yep. Okay. So if you're looking for a transmission shop, Rich, to get that taken care of, uh, go to bumper to bumper and you'll find one. Hey, uh, Matt here. I'm looking to hear one of these texts. Brian in Maricopa, I sometimes get a grind noise when I first turn the AC on. How can I diagnose if compressor, AC clutch, or both? What are you thinking? Grind noise when you first turn on? What kind of car was it? I don't have my text. He on. didn't say. I was thinking more of like, I get squeaks out of, com- you know, first thing. You know, kind of yeah. AC belt squeaking. Reed. You know, when you start the car up. Yeah. Send us a text back with what kind of car it is. But, yeah, when you originally just hit that button to turn on, what's happening is you're engaging an electronic magnet, and you've got a compressor. Let's just say it's spinning, I don't know, 1,000 RPMs, or the pulley is, and now all of a sudden you've got to lock those two together. So that compressor goes from zero to 1,000 in about a half a second. And uh, so you could have some slippage on the clutch. You could have a, a belt tensioner because now all of a sudden you've loaded that belt down. So you could have a tensioner or an idler problem, a number of different things. It's just a process of elimination. So For sure. That. We've got Mike, Andrew, Tom, and Corey and a few phone calls floating in at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. For that last perfect getaway for summer, look no further than Bunker to Bunker, the golf show's next tour stop at the spectacular JW Marriott Desert Ridge Resort and Spa on Saturday, August 25th, benefiting Phoenix Children's Hospital. An incredible value, the two-person scramble on the famous Faldo course is loaded with special prizes, lunch and a coupon for another round of golf, all for just $95. Make it a stay and play weekend with room specials starting as low as $99 per night. Space is limited, so register today at Bunker golf.com some say one of the worst sounds you can hear is a car crash yes and all the stress that goes with that can be worse the accident is stressful enough the repair process doesn't have to be hi this is kevin dave and leo and we're the collision team at bumper to bumper radio individually we own campus body salon i-17 collision and first class auto body together we're an unbeatable team working for you not the insurance company to get your job done right Check us out at bumper to bumper radio.com. Here's what Carrie from Tempe had to say about her experience with Good Works Auto Repair. As soon as you realize, I need to get some work done on my car, I'm sure the thought occurs to you that you're about to get taken for a ride. I used to share the same sentiment and wondered if the shop was going to make something up and have me spending hundreds of dollars instead of 30 I was planning on for a simple oil change. This is one of the reasons I will only go to Good Works Auto Repair because I trust them. Putting trust in an auto shop didn't come easily. It's been built over several visits with them doing exactly what was needed, not coercing me into unnecessary work. Ask them for an oil change and a safety inspection, they do just that. No baloney, list of filters, belts, and whatchamacallits that need replacing on my new car. Thank you, Goodworks Auto Repair, for being there for me when I need you. Appreciate the kind words. It's always a pleasure. Glenn Hayward here. Come experience what award-winning auto service should be. Goodworks Auto Repair in Tempe, or visit us at goodworksautorepair.com. Arizona's news station. News station. 
KTAR on air, 92.3 FM, online at KTAR.com and streaming live on the KTAR News app. Your breaking news and traffic now. KTAR News Time, 1130. I am Mark Carlson. A warning from the State Department over over reports of sanction violations in favor of North Korea. After reports say Russia may be violating U.N. sanctions on North Korea, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says he'll be discussing those allegations with Moscow. We expect the Russians in all countries to abide by the U.N. Security Council resolutions and enforce sanctions on North Korea. Reports say Russia has engaged in business ventures with North Korea. In response, North Korea called the U.S.'s warning alarming and says the U.S.'s stance on sanctions could complicate plans to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. Mark Remillard, ABC News. The raging Northern California wildfires are expected to keep the upper hand today thanks to a forecast for low humidity and gusty winds. Crews battling the deadly blazes are bracing for the possibility that flames could be driven into new areas and threaten more homes. The National Weather Service has issued red flag warnings of extreme fire danger through tonight. Traffic and weather now. Here's Mike Daniels in the Valley Chevy Dealers Traffic Center. Well, thanks, Mark. i got a crash in Chandler on Alma School Road right there at Ryan Road. That's north of Queen Creek. And that crash in Tempe has cleared on Loop 202 westbound at Priest Drive. This support brought to you by Lund Mortgage. Increased property values mean you might be able to finally drop your mortgage insurance. Ask the Lund Mortgage team how you can start saving hundreds of dollars every month. Call 623-875-9940 today. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. Thank you, Mike. KTAR weather for the Valley today, sunny and hot. The high about 112. Tonight, clear skies with a low of 89. Tomorrow, sunny and hot again. A predicted high of 112. It's 105 degrees currently in Mesa. Weather brought to you by Howard Air. Weather, replace, or repair. Call Howard Air. I'm Mark Carlson on Arizona's news station, KTAR News. Get breaking news and your favorite KTAR news personalities on your time with the KTAR News app. Stream us live or get podcasts on demand. On demand. Download the KTAR News app for Android or iPhone now. Live streaming audio on the KTAR News app is presented by Sanderson Ford. Hi, I'm Dave Riccio, owner of Tri-City Transmission. Well, you may have come to know us for being a transmission expert. What you may not know is that our customers regularly ask us why we don't perform repairs to the rest of the vehicle. You guys are so great. Why work on just the transmission? Well, the request became hard to ignore, and three years ago, we began to build an infrastructure to perform general automotive repair. We weren't going to do general repair if we couldn't be great at it. So in 2013, we began the soft opening of Tri-City Auto Repair on Smith Road. We brought on ASC Master Technicians to work side-by-side with our Master Transmission Technicians. The combination of the best in both of these trades has created a synergy that allows us not only to fix your transmission, but to service and repair your whole car and to do it well. Let's face it, the modern car has become so integrated. We believe all of our expert knowledge puts us ahead of the curve. Find us at TriCityTransmission.com or TempeAutoRepairShop.com. That's TempeAutoRepairShop.com. Honesty and integrity, it's the only option. Hi, Spencer Doucet for H&I Automotive. H is for honesty and I is for integrity. We've built our business on these two principles. Hi, this is Danny Grant. And I'm Paul Garcia. We're Spencer's business partners. Originally, we were customers that were referred by friends to check out this great shop in Mesa. We saw for ourselves how special the experience was at H&I. Yep, we went from raving fans to good friends to enthusiastic partners when Spencer was looking to expand his business to the East Valley. Thanks, guys. The overwhelming support from our customers, families, and partners has allowed us to celebrate the opening of our second, brand-new, state-of-the-art location in Gilbert. Two locations, same principles. Quality service at a great value that you can count on for all your automotive needs. Backed with an industry-leading 60-month, 60,000-mile parts and labor warranty. We invite you to check us out at HIAutomotive.com. Who can you trust here in the Valley to repair your ride? This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM. 
Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and we are your KTR Car Guys. We're taking phone calls and texts, 602-277-5827. We've got Mike, we've got Dennis, we've got Andrew, we've got Tom, and we've got Chris. And Matt, I want to take a minute just to mention Bumper to Bumper Radio, what the heck it is. Bumper to Bumper Radio is a show designed to put you in the know about car repair and car issues so that it's a comfort thing. It's not full of anxiety and all that stuff. Uh, it is also, man, I do the show every week. There's also a website, bumper to bumper com. If you're looking for a shop, don't have a shop to call home, and we, we think you should find a shop and stick with them. Uh, you need to find a shop, you can find them at bumper to bumper com. And there's shops all over the valley. I mentioned a couple today, H&I Automotive in the East Valley. Uh, they do a great job. You may have just heard their commercial, H&I for Honesty and Integrity. And those guys just have a great following. And, they, you know, for years they just built that business on word of mouth, and they just they had opened up their second location here recently. They're great. Also, if you're in the central Phoenix area, Virginia Auto Service, uh, you know, and, and it's one of those things people think, well, I don't live anywhere near that. But if you if you work in Central Phoenix or in the downtown area, hey, go see Virginia Auto. So sometimes consider where you work, where you live when picking a shop. Uh, you certainly, you know, convenience is a is a good thing. But the other thing, thing to consider is auto repair is one of those things where I'll drive a little further to go see a, a, a good technician or somebody who does right by me. But you can spend an awful lot of money uh, wrong you know, by picking them. Especially so in the body shop world. Because mm-hmm. remember, we've got body shops, our collision, yep. our collision team. That's a usually a big purchase. And that's something that's really messed up and you see it and you want it right. It's worth the extra 10-minute drive or 20-mile tow or whatever. You to don't want someone shoehorning your car back together. Exactly. You know, there's a lot of key exactly. safety things that need to be done and... That's that's a place where people can cut corner and put a little nice paint yeah. over the top of it. Yeah, and like we're not trying to get you to change shops either. We want to help you understand. We want to encourage you that when you're in the shop and they're telling you something, that you that you ask questions, you engage them, so you're not just buying blindly. You know, is that oh we're going to put a new compressor on? Well. All not all things new are created equal. We can get a new air conditioning compressor for your suburban. Well, the new one's a Delphi or a Delco or whoever made that for GM. But then there's Acme Auto Parts in China that makes a new one too. But that one's a piece of garbage. You know, you mm-hmm. got to go. What's the uh, movie Tommy Boy? You oh put yeah, a piece of crap in a box and Mark warranty on it. But I <laughs> yeah. still have a piece of crap with a warranty. <laughs> so, but we want you to ask questions and and, ch- and not challenge. You don't want to get in the face. No. Them, but ask questions and have good information. And when you're armed with good information, you make good decisions. And, and the other thing is how to develop a relationship because yes. you got to have a relationship with your shop. You don't want to just, you know, it's not like, oh, you know, go start a relationship with them. And, and, and the thing about relationship is that sometimes you're like, I don't like the way that is. I'll go talk about it, you know. But talk about it. You don't go in and open up to, you know, both barrels of the gun. You just go have a conversation. And and usually most things that aggravate you or you feel like you got a rock in your shoe, it's just a bad assumption in there somewhere on one part or both parts, you know. Miscommunication, nothing to fight about. No reason to be divorced. We just sort it out. Oh, okay. Now we know. One of us, you know, I hey. I know what crow tastes like. I pull up and need to play the crow every every now and then. So <laughs> he but, looks uh, cute with his bib on when he's doing that. So <laughs> yeah. let's go with Andrew in Wickenburg. He's got a 2003 Nissan Xterra. Andrew, that's what I drive. How can I help you with your Xterra? Oh, I love my truck. I really do. Um, basically, this is an update from me calling in the past, uh, probably a couple of months ago. In short, it was throwing out a uh, code for a catalytic converter. I told you how basically uh, the way I got the code to go away is by changing my octane. I just went to middle octane, and that seemed to change it around uh, where the code went away, and you suggested that I go to one of your people, which I did, and it went to uh, eventually with no dummy light showing, it said um, a pending code because I was telling you how the code the dummy light went away when I put the octane, the higher octane away uh, in there. So now it's been a couple of months because um, the code came back. So then I went back to putting the higher octane again. The dummy light went away again. So I had this mystery. I just don't know where to go. 
Well, what you do, like I said to the guy who called earlier, wanted to know about his Acura, does he always need to put high-octane fuel in? Yeah. You... If your car calls for high-octane fuel, you need to. But if you're putting in a higher-octane fuel, all you're doing is masking a problem. You're lipstick in a pig. Not to say that your car is a pig, but I'm just making my point. You're masking a problem. So what you need to do is go back to the regular fuel, put your scan tool away, let the code set, and then let a qualified shop diagnose the problem. If it's, it, There's no catalytic converter code that says your catalytic converter is bad. It's a catalyst efficiency. They're using a series of air fuel ratio sensors or oxygen sensors. There's multiple Maybe for one side or the other of the engine or or one bank of the engine, but there's one before the converter and there's one after the converter, and we're looking for a change. Right. And if we don't see a change, either we have one of those two people down there lying to us or the guy in the middle is not doing the work. That's the diagnosis. Sounds simple. Not right. necessarily. And I would imagine it's on the cusp of that code setting. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can, you can actually clear out a CAT code. And it may not set for two more months, okay, mm -hmm. because that's not one that sets right away. So is it placebo by putting in the uh, higher octane fuel that that went away? Possibly. Or maybe that just changed the way the engine's running just enough to get it passed, you know, but it's not, we didn't really fix anything. Well, it also depends on driving habits. You go up the freeway, you're going up Sunset Point, or you drive a little aggressive and you're flogging that car, you're running more fuel through it. The catalytic converter is not as efficient. It can't keep up. So if you're driving like grandma and just kind of soft pedaling, but if you're driving like me, <laughs> yeah, you're, I run, I, <laughs> you're running some I drive them like they're stolen every yeah. time I get a chance. So. so, so yeah. Well, good luck with that, Andrew. Thanks so much for the follow-up. Let's go with, uh, looks like Tom in Ahwatukee. He's got a 68 Ford Mustang. How can we help you, Tom? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for taking the call. Yeah, so... Um, on my Mustang, it's actually a very similar, I think, to the text that you had most recently uh, spoke about about 10 minutes ago. Um, when I turn on the air conditioning, um, the uh, fan uh, completely locks, and uh, the belt screeches at a super high pitch that will scare the whole neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I put a new water pump on the vehicle and figured it, it, is it going to be the compressor or, or possibly the clutch and so looking based off your answer off of the other gentleman you said well what's the year year and type of car because it could differ sure but what when you say the fan stops when you turn the ac on uh, clarify that for me yeah so the fan blade completely locks okay. and when you, you turn cannot the move on. it even with your hand yeah when you turn the compressor on Right. Okay, exactly. and, there's, and there's no fan clutch on that fan either, right? That's just straight that, to the water pump. That's right. I actually okay. thought it might okay. be a clutch, and I okay. took the whole fan blade off, and there was no clutch. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let me tell you. So we're sitting there. The car is running. Everything's fine. You hit that AC button, boom, it locks up tired, and it just shuts. And and, and does the belt slip, or does it actually stall the car, too? Um, I'm sorry, does the belt, uh, so the, does you, the belt you, spin? You, you hit the AC button and the thing just starts screaming like bloody murder. Right, yeah, and I think it's probably the belt screeching along the the, the metal because it's not nothing's moving. Right. So it sounds yeah. to me like you have a locked-up compressor. So on that car and, and, and most compressors, on you know they're changing a little bit, so I'm not talking about your super ultra-modern Variable compression. And, this is like an old York compression. That's yeah, what I'm exactly. Picturing. A big old monster on top. So the part where the belt spins is just a hub, and that spins all the time. And then the center section is actually the compressor. So what happens when you're hitting that button, it's turning on the magnet, and the part that is spinning all the time it now gets locked to the center section. So without the car running, no keys in the ignition, we don't want to lose fingers, you can probably go up to the front of that air conditioning compressor and try and rotate it, and it will not spin. I suspect you have a locked up compressor. Mm, I'm kind of the problem. I'm kind of leaning the same yeah, way too. The belt's screaming because the compressor's locked solid, so the belt's probably burning. I bet if you raise the RPMs, it starts smoking right off the AC compressor. So that's what I'd be looking at as a locked up compressor. I thought you might have the, the wind jammer AC in that car being a '68. You know. It, Windjammers, windows down, 68 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. 
But thanks for the call, Tom. 602-277-5827. Let's go with Chris in Glendale on an 06 PT Cruiser. How can we help you, Chris? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Oh, gentlemen, I have been having an intermittent overheating issue, and my mileage has been dropped. I took it to multiple shops, and finally one shop found what they call temporary codes for transmission overheating. Um, I've replaced thermostat, thermostat housing, the radiator, had all the hoses checked, the... Uh, transmission codes, I took it to AMCO. They said I needed a new transmission, that that would fix my overheating problem. Imagine that. So they rebuilt my transmission, and that didn't fix it. Yeah, that's, then, uh, that's, a, that's a pretty common problem. Uh, I don't mean to cut you off here, but we're coming up on a mm-hmm. break. But uh, that's right in that time frame where the Chrysler computers uh, had an issue. It's actually the computer uh, that where the code is stored it's telling you the transmission is overheating, but it's actually a defective computer. So some, somewhere in that, in the uh, you know the chip in there inside that computer, it's just not it's not working right, and it's just I mean we've run into this so many times I can't tell you. Yeah, it, but the it, first it, thing people see is they see an overheat code for the transmission. Oh, transmission must be bad. This is the kind of stuff where people there's so much money spent wrong on auto repair uh, if if you go in some place where it's not qualified. You know, I, and yeah. I, I see that happen. Yeah, yeah, and, and to break that down, I know we need to we need to take a break here, but there's a sensor in there that just tells the computer that you, what's the temperature inside this transmission. It, 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 it's important if you have high temperature, the transmission could be slipping. But if you don't have any symptoms and you just have that code, again, we're relying on inputs. Just think of a whole bunch of people out there in a crowd. Those are all the different sensors in the transmission in a car, and they're yelling up to this to the guy at the podium, telling him all this stuff. And then he's got to tell another group of people what to do. If all these people out here aren't telling the truth, don't just replace them with another set of liars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a new sensor, a new transmission. That wasn't the problem. The, the guy standing on the podium was was getting bad info. And sometimes I mean, that, info. that one can be a little easier to diagnose because you plug the scanner into it, you turn the car on, it says the transmission is 1,900 degrees, and you know that just can't be true. But, uh, you know, some guys miss that if they haven't seen it before. And I wasn't calling anybody a liar. I'm no. just making a point about the, about the <laughs> Right, sensor. for sure. So. When we come back, we're going to go with Mike, Dennis, and Mark. And, Chris, if you hang on the line, we might get back to you because we I don't think we answered all of your question. You listen to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys, on Bumper to Bumper Radio. <laughs> Having an accident is stressful. Dealing with the repair process shouldn't be. Hi, Leo Petrozella for Campus Body Salon. We've taken the stress out of collision repair since 1973. And here's a couple of tips to de-stress your repair. Make your own choice. Some insurance companies try to convince you that you must use their approved shop for your repair. Not true. Arizona state law allows you to choose the facility that's right for you. Beware of the cheapest estimate. Typically, it's the one from the insurance company cutting corners to trim costs or focusing on appearance only. At Campus Body Salon, appearance is important, but structural integrity and safety are even more critical. Campus Body Salon, independent, family-owned and operated, and bumper-to-bumper radio approved. Check out our Cash for Your Crash program where we pay you 10% off of your repair up to $1,000. Campus Body Salon, the best care in collision repair. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. That's our closing line, Pops. I know, Jeff. Just reinforcing that we're full service auto repair. At Kurtz Auto Repair, we do it all, including diesel. We have the passion, training, equipment, and expertise for diesel. Our techs are ASC certified for diesel and advanced diesel diagnostics. Toy hauling, horse trailering, off-roading, or work trucking, we've got you covered. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic, if your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Check us out at mycarhurts.com. 
Few cities are as car-centric as Phoenix, and this is the show that'll help you to better understand that machine you depend on to get around the valley. It's Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM and the KTAR app for Android and iPhone. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. We've got to be quick because we got some phone calls to get to here. A few texts. we got a text from Donna. She's interested in a camera for a car and that kind of thing. You know, Donna, I think that's a good question for a stereo shop. Uh, you know, I'm thinking it sounds good to me. Uh, they're over there on Broadway. Uh, give them a shout. Reach out to Mark or Dave. What part of town? Where was she? She's in Phoenix. You know, in Phoenix, I like, um, I, I, I might say the name wrong. I think it's Sun Valley Stereo. Kind of a little red building. Looks like a house south side of Thomas right around the freeway. That's a good one. Or And I like Soundworks up in North Phoenix. I've used them both. You've had a good experience with those guys in Mesa. So it just depends on, on where you are. And if you have a regular repair shop, give those guys a call. Say, hey, who's the stereo shop you recommend? For sure. And then we've got a text here, 2010 Mini Cooper, check engine light. Took it to the shop. They found oil on one of the plugs, changed a seal. I'm thinking a valve cover seal is probably what they changed, 91,000 miles. Guess what? The uh, check engine light came back on. They still have got that misfire thing going on. In the shop, saying 900 bucks for uh, timing chain, timing gears, timing belt, something like that. I'm just kind of yeah. paraphrasing here a little you bit. You know, the Mini Coopers, and I did send him a reply back on the text. I would really be looking heavily at carbon buildup, especially if that car has direct fuel injection. Carbon buildup is a big issue on the Mini Coopers. Same with anything that has direct fuel injection. I'm if he's talking about gears, I was thinking about timing chain at first, but that also has variable valve timing, so it could be cam phasers. But typically, those are not going to discriminate and only cause one cylinder to misfire. When you have a timing chain issue or you have a a uh, a, 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 a phaser issue with cam timing, throughout the whole motor, it's going to usually going to affect all cylinders. So I think you need some more diagnosis if that if that's kind of a guess. Not sure where you're going, but uh, ask some more questions. For sure. All right, let's go with Mike in Chandler. He's got a 1998 Mercury Grand Marquis. How can we help you, Mike? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Thanks for taking my call, guys. Yeah, I'm having a real problem with this. Uh, my cooling fan seems to want to work whenever it feels like it. I've replaced the engine temperature control sensor. I've checked the fuses. I've replaced the relays. Uh, the fan had been replaced uh, two years ago. I've done a radiator, thermostat, and basically what it does is when it's under 100 degrees, the car is fine. Now, um, let's say I'm driving down the street. I turn the air conditioning on. Everything is fine. When I pull up to a red light, after about 10 or 15 seconds, the fan will kick off. And then the air gets hot. So it's just working when it feels like it. I don't know why. I thought, you know, because the compressor was cycling, mm -hmm. that it was low on Freon, which it turns out it's not. I am actually have some serious pressure in the high pressure line. But even with the air conditioning not running, the fan does not want to work when it's supposed to, when it's hot out. You know, if it's, if it's cool out, I'm fine. At night, I'm totally fine. I can drive anywhere. But when it's over 100, 105 degrees, Nada. And, and, but, and that, but now it doesn't overheat. What if you just left the air conditioner off and went out driving around today? Would that air, would the fan cycle as it was supposed to, or is this symptomatic only with the air conditioner on? No, and that's the thing. I, I didn't even want to bring that up because I didn't want to confuse you and, and uh, kind of misdirect you towards the air conditioning. Now, even with the, the air off, um, when it's over 105 degrees, that fan just won't kick on like I come to a red light and if I'm there for you know any amount of time it won't kick on okay well what well, I mean that that's going to be a diagnostic issue somebody's going to need a scan tool and you know maybe a lab scope the the fan gets power or ground you know and, and it's going to be modulated one of those two so we need to find out where it when it what it loses why doesn't the fan work and then there's going to be a module that tells that to work so we're going to be monitoring the computer, and the computer's going to say, we're going to see fan command, yes, but the fan's not on. So now we're going to go see if that signal is getting out to the relay. I, I think there's a total, totally integrated control module on that. I don't think there's a, a, a necessarily a, fan, a cooling fan relay. So we're going to see if that message from the computer is getting to the relay. And if it is, great. 
Now, why isn't it getting out of the relay? Why isn't it relaying the message to keep the fan on? So it's just a series of tests to be done. It's an electrical issue, probably. And and, 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 and a wiring diagram is going to help you, the roadmap. It's going to help you see the system, what components. Because maybe there's a – I mean, you mentioned some components, but maybe we're missing something in there. You know, see what all – you know, is there stuff in there that you can actually test? Go here. Go here. Go here. And see the roadmap of what's happening and, and, and understand how that system works. And usually we got to study a wiring diagram for a little bit. Then we see what's going on. Then we know where to go test. Exactly. So, thanks for the call, Mike. Let's go with Dennis. He's got a 1991 Toyota pickup. How can we help you, Dennis? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, Dennis. All right. No, Dennis. Dennis. No, Dennis. We're going to put Dennis back on hold. Maybe we'll grab him. I guess it's uh, Mark and Scottsdale's turn. 2011 Honda Civic. Mark, what's happening? Hey, how you guys doing? Good. How about you? All right, I got another uh, AC question. It seems like a lot of AC questions today. It's hot out. <laughs> uh, I, um, a couple weeks ago, I was coming home trying to turn my AC on. I, I have a turn knob to turn the fan on. No fan came on. I was driving down the road. Maybe five, ten minutes later, it came back on. Uh, but now, a couple weeks later, it's not coming on at all. There's no fan at all. No cooling. Uh, no. I'm not getting any air conditioning. So no. I didn't know if it was simply the fuse, uh, if it could be a compressor, or if it's just the fan itself needs to be replaced. I didn't know. There's, what. N- there's no air movement out of the vents. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, there's no air coming out of it whatsoever. There's no okay. fan blowing, if I was blowing a, air. If I was a guessing man, I think we're losing a blower resistor or a, a blower motor. You know, and, and really those go as a pair. Believe it or not, we could go in there and you got a resistor. The resistor is what controls the speeds of the fan, okay? Those resistors fail and then you got no airflow because, it, because it's not getting uh, power to the motor. But what happens is those resistors go bad as a result of the motor is drawing a lot of mm-hmm. amps and it's overheating the resistor. Mark, so, Mar- Mark they, how old are you? Uh, 46. Okay, so you know the Fonz, right? Uh-huh. All right, give it the old Fonzarelli touch, too. Go out there. When that fan's not working, just go smack that dashboard right underneath the glove box. Give it a, a tap, and if that fan kicks on, it's your first step. You've got a bad fan motor, but you probably ought to replace the resistor, too. For sure. And, uh, you know, Matt, I hurt my hand sometimes when I, I'm getting older, when I bang don't, on don't stuff. Don't hit it so hard. But that blower motor mark uh. is just right down there underneath that dashboard area, kind of where you're feet are if you're in the passenger side. Um, yeah, that's where I heard clicking the other day, yeah. Yeah, and it, it may, the clicking may or may not have anything to do with it, but if you turn the fan, turn everything on you, and the fan just doesn't come on, just give it a swat down there in that area and you might just get the thing started and then and then throw a blower motor in it. And, and for sure. Sister. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, remember, you can find us at bumper to bumper radiocom 24-7. There's a list of great shops on there. You can also find Copies of old shows, our podcasts there. You guys have a great week from all the shops at Bumper to Bumper Radio.